Good morning, I'm back in the studio today. I'll be doing some studio work today. Half the day I'll be working in the studio and the other half I'll be editing a new video coming your way. One of the things that I did that I didn't film was sort all my artwork from the 30 day black and white abstract challenge. It was quite the task. I'm really happy it's done. Let me just quickly show you. I bought a bunch of these portfolios to sort them out and most of them are all filled up and I put them obviously by size instead of by series and I sorted everything I wanted to keep. It feels really good to see everything neatly put in one place. I put the portraits in here. And in here I bought one for my oil pastel stuff, remember this? The Modigliani portrait, the Bob Ross tutorial, they're all in there. They'll be ready to go when I need to. I have to revamp my website and I'll be selecting series from these to sell on my website and open a print shop as well, but that'll be probably in 2019. And I didn't keep everything. A lot of it I threw out, a lot of it I kept for textures, for collage art, which I keep in a box. And some of it I kept, but just as inspiration, I keep them in this drawer here. So all of this is stuff that maybe didn't work out for me as much, but there are good ideas that I want to keep as reference for maybe bigger pieces or combine with other ideas. One thing I wanna to do today is I want to recycle old canvases to kind of use them up and use up my art materials. For example, this is an old portrait that I'm not keeping, so I'm gonna cover this with gesso and reuse the canvas. During my art studio tour, I showed you all my art material where I store them. In here is some pieces that are, are not finished and this is all my canvases and my papers and all that. And it's important for me to keep a balance of like trying out new things to review on this channel because that's something that I care about and I want to do. I've always been curious to try out new materials, to try to find the best thing and all that stuff. But at the same time, I don't want to hoard a million things and have things overflow that I'm not using. It's too much for me. I, I, it gives me <laughs> anxiety. I can't do it. So I'm trying to find a balance between trying new things and using up what I have. So for example, I might have an idea for a, a piece that I want to make in a specific format, but instead of going to buy that canvas, I will see if I have it in my stock. And if I don't have it in my stock, I will just adapt. I will take a canvas that I have, let's say it's a square format or a smaller format, and I'll think, well, what can I do with this that would inspire me? And I use it. That's what I want to do instead of just buying new things. And there's something super satisfying about finalizing an old work that you've been working on or using up something completely to the last drop. I don't know if it's like that for you, but it's like that for me, so. Another thing I want to do is find a way to completely seal this. Remember this, the crackle medium that makes all these scales. So I'm going to test it with different varnishes, top coats, mediums and such to just make sure that it doesn't peel off and it's very secure. I'll start with that and see where it takes me.
as usual with these types of mediums i'm trying to have a protective coat to prevent the scales from flaking as you saw in that clip surprisingly the scales without anything are pretty strongly glued down to the board so that's good to know i thought they would be more fragile and brittle and they would kind of fall off without anything protecting it so it's good news that by themselves they kind of hold on and now i'm just trying to find some kind of medium to have them like really secure in there without changing the color or the texture so i tried a matte and a gloss gel here which is the thickest medium and i don't know if in between the cracks it will leave a milky residue once it's dry that's the test that i want to to have done this is my matte medium, which is the pretty classic thing. Again, I'm not sure if it's going to leave a residue in the middle. So let's see what it does once it's dry. The good news is that there are many options. Most of them dried very translucent. Aside from the transparent gesso, there are some little excess bits that stayed between the scales that are not quite translucent, but might be a user error. The airbrush medium and the matte varnish are both pretty glossy. So if I want that finish, it's a good option. As far as the gels, I find that they're a bit too thick for what I want to use this for. You see between the cracks, there's like excess material and it gives um, a thicker effect that I'm not really looking for. The matte medium is probably the best option. It doesn't give off any shine whatsoever and the scales are very solidly glued down. But even with the thinner mediums, the scales are not budging, which is a very good thing. So like I said, I have many options. If I want a gloss finish i would use the airbrush medium which is like the consistency of water that's the one i would use the most and for my regular use i will i'm going to keep using the matte medium now i think i'm going to sketch a little bit in the next few weeks i want to sketch a bunch of different abstract landscapes to work on those minimal landscapes that i really enjoyed and during the black and white uh, abstract challenge but i don't necessarily plan on doing them only in black and white i mean as bigger pieces for now i'm just going to sketch them really fast focusing on composition 100 percent in pencil so it's just going to be like lines and shapes nothing super elaborate just to give me ideas of what composition really work so i'm hoping to accumulate a bunch of them in the next few weeks and just pick and choose the ones that really pop out of the lot and the way i'm doing it is i like working in thumbnails format so i i cut out squares like this different sizes in cardboard and i just outline the square in my sketchbook and i, I find it's a good way to work neatly and fast <laughs>
I don't want to put too many details in these thumbnails just because I feel like it would influence me too much in the finished pieces. I find that the least amount of details I put in a quick sketch or an idea, the better it is. Because I've found that if it looks too nice in the sketch, I get intimidated when I try to make it as a bigger, larger piece. And I lose a little bit of that surprise effect that I always crave when I create something new. And also I find that if it works well just with like gray tones and gray lines composition wise and just the line work, I find it has a good potential of being successful once I put it in color and on a larger scale. So that's my strategy with these little thumbnails. I hope you're having a great day. I'm going to go edit now and I'll see you in a couple of days for another one. Bye.